Andy, Poly Model Engineering, you've recently just uh, gone through your biggest investment in high technology machinery with this star machine. What, what was the uh, kind of motive behind it? Um, well, we used to have an old uh, VMC20, which, we've, uh, which we had for about 11 years, but unfortunately uh, it got to the end of its life and uh, became uneconomical to repair. So for a few months we were sort of looking around at the various options that were available, such as subcontracting, uh, buying a second-hand machine or going down the new route. Uh, and in the end we came to the decision to bite the bullet and, uh, like you say, make our biggest investment in the 17 years that we've been running and go and buy a star machine. What is the model of this machine? It's 20 mil, isn't it? Yeah, it's a 20 mil machine, uh, seven axis. Uh, the old machine that we used to have um, was a bit limiting um, and that was one of the reasons we wanted to go out and, you know, sort of take take the bullet, for want of a better word, and buy a, a modern machine. Um, because uh, one of the things with the old machine, it was a it was a bottleneck in what it would, what we could produce with it, um, and we got like thousands of new bits of components that we wanted to produce, so we could push our uh, business forward. You know, the sort of the next step, for want of a better word. What do you actually produce here, Andy? Uh, what we uh, manufacture here are uh, live steam models in the five inch gauge in a kit form, which are uh, fully working with a boiler just a miniature version of the full size thing. Uh, which at, at, at present we've got uh, 10 different locomotives which we produce um, and we send out 12 kits a year uh, in a flat pack version, I suppose is the best way to describe it. And the guy at the other end, he just assembles it on his kitchen table. Is he going into just a UK market or are you exporting them around the world? No, we export worldwide. We've got uh, quite a lot of them in Australia, New Zealand, uh, not so many in America, but Europe's very strong as well, South Africa. Uh, I mean, there's, there's no limit really. Uh, and there's kind of two sides to this story. One that ran extremely smoothly, which is the installation of the machine yeah. and that sales process. Uh, and one that didn't, you had a little bit of a, a, an accident just before the machine was delivered. Do you want to just tell our audience yeah, what happened? Did, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a bike enthusiast and uh, we placed, once we made the decision, we placed the order for the machine and that was turning up early in September. Uh, and unfortunately, I went, well, not unfortunately, I went over to the Isle of Man to watch the TT races, classic ones. And whilst I was over there, I was involved in a very serious motorbike injury, which uh, led to the uh, loss of my right leg. Uh, but me being me, nothing was going to stop me. Uh, so through hell and high water, I sort of got out of hospital and I actually was here when the machine was delivered. Uh, so I was there, sat in my wheelchair, it was pushed through the workshop. I thought, I'm not going to miss this for the world. Um, well, I mean, it's testament to your, to your strength, really, Andy. But on, on the machine, you mentioned three things. You mentioned the options you had, either uh, subcontracting the workout, yeah. buying a new machine or buying a used one. Was it just a very persuasive salesman from Star that managed to get you over the line on a new one? Or was there more uh, in-depth reasons why you actually went down that route? Um, the, uh, it, I mean, Mark, the sales guy, I mean, I've known him for a very long time. Um, always used to visit to them at uh, Mac 2000 and obviously they used to be based at Melbourne and when he used to get uh, spares for the old machine um, if he was about we always used to have a bit of a chat so Mark did have an awful lot to do with it I mean I'd done my research looked at the market um, and Star came out on top what, what would those reasons be for you Andy why did it come out on top because there is a lot of choice these days uh, with technology out there on sliding headlights um, I mean one of the one of the I say big factors. Uh, one, of the, one of the main factors was the fact that they're on our doorstep and uh, in the conversations that I had with Mark and, and uh, one of the, a, a couple of their other guys down there was the support uh, that, that, that we were going to get because they were on our doorstep and also that we'd had a previous machine which was a star and I just, I just liked the technology. What about the kind of um, uh, progress in the way you program these machines and how they can produce accurate parts repeatably? Was, was that a factor? Uh, that was a big factor, actually. I mean, fortunately, my hair grows back very quickly. Uh, programming the old machine um, was a headache, to say the least. It was uh, quite a lot of the time it was like, you know, well, we'll try this or we'll try that. With the new machine, we get star assist uh, for programming it which was uh, a fantastic way for us to go uh, much easier. My apprentice, Matt, found it very easy to use as well.
you've recently uh, made a new investment in this Star SR20J. Can you tell me the benefits this machine has had to the company? Uh, it's phenomenal, this machine. It's so beneficial because of the smaller parts we make. On something like our fixed head, we can't accomplish that. But on this, it's so quick, so simple, and say we're making high quality parts in half the time we would have done before. Right, so it's really increased your capacity and it's enabled you to take on more work, is that correct? Uh, yes, very correct. And say so now we're looking at things that we never would have considered before making because now we actually have the facilities and the capacity to be able to do things that, well, were a dream before. Well, I've been informed that you're an apprentice here yeah. and you've only been using and working this machine for two months, yeah. but you've not only been working the machine, you're also programming the machine too. How long has it taken you to program this machine and run this machine? Uh, well, programming, I went from absolutely no pro program experience whatsoever, three days at Star uh, in Derby, and I can program this thing quite happily now. Still missing some of the very higher up techniques and things like that, but for what we're doing at the minute, just getting the back light out of the way, it's brilliant. And how are you programming the machine? Are you programming offline? Uh, yeah, offline programming with Star Assist, um, which is their operating system with all their macros and everything like that, which just made life so much easier. So you're very familiar now with the programming of this machine, but what about the setting of the machine? Uh, same again with the setting. We had three days training in-house using our very machine, uh, and now I'm quite happy setting the tools up. It's got, they've got a very simple operating system for doing it as well, which just makes life so much easier. So changing of the guide bushes, the tools, it, it, it's very simple? Uh, yeah, very simple. One, well. When it first arrived, I didn't know how to turn it on. But three days here with Nick, uh, who was our trainer, and provided all the tools that we needed to do it with, and now I can do it near enough with my eyes shut. So you really did get thrown in at the deep end, and you come out uh, swimming, really? Yeah, I got chucked in quite deep with it, but no, I'm quite happy operating it now. So still things I'm unsure about, but Star's always at the end of the phone if I need them. So I've been informed that the locomotives have roughly 350 different variants of components. So can you just tell me a little bit about the amount of uh, work that comes through this machine, quantities, size of parts? Uh, yeah, the size we can do anything up to 20 mil. And the quantities can vary from 100 to about 5,000, just depending on which part we are in to make at that time. You would automatically presume that when buying a sliding head machine, you'd be looking to buy this machine to just do high volume work, but it's not the case here. You're using it for low volume work too, so you've got um, a lot of flexibility here. Yeah, it provides us with flexibility to do low volume if we wish, but, and we can do low volume in half the time that we would on any other machine we've got. So. Instead of just doing high volume all the time, we actually have the flexibility now that if somebody just turns around and said, we need this part, yep, next week we can have it for you. And, and is that due to the ease of setup as well? How quickly you can reset the machine? Uh, yeah, it's very easy to reset. So with an hour, you can have all the guide bushes changed and you can have a new bit of bar going through there, ready. You've got fixed head lathes here as well, yeah? and, and they have uh, are renowned for potentially being easier to set and get running than sliding heads, but that, that, that gap's closing now, isn't it, with a machine like this from start? Yeah, very much so, very much so. Um, that was one of the problems with the old, the old machine, was like tool setting. Um, it was very difficult. The, you had to use a tool setting device, whereas on this one, it's much easier to set the tools and produce the first component. Tell me about your uh, reason for going for a seven axis machine, something with a lot of capability. Some of your parts look quite simple. You know, is that a good analogy or is that a good uh, comment from me or, or are you doing more complicated parts too? Well, I mean, a lot, of the comp a lot of the components are simple, but the problem was with the old machine we had, we used to have to do a lot of manual operations to finish them off. Whereas on this machine, with the added flexibility that's in there, the components actually come out finished and we don't have to touch them so that frees up a lot of man hours that we can put into r d and other areas which have you know which we're short of in you know especially in days like today it's all a cost thing and when you talk about r d some of these uh some of these locomotives here they're, they're pretty impressive do you need to do much research and development or do you just keep making what you've got here um well, we're always, we're always trying to keep one step ahead of the opposition, so obviously there's bits and pieces here that are undercover, um, so to speak. Um, but it, it just makes it so much easier with this sort of machine to produce the first, you know, just say a one-off component, so we can prove that it's going to do what we want it to do, and then we can then look at doing larger batches. 
And how many of these are going out of your door a year, Andy? I mean, they're pretty impressive. We don't come to many companies where they're making, uh, making things like this. No, that's very true. I mean, we're quite unique in as much as we actually manufacture what we sell, if that's a fair way to put it. And we do probably about 90% of the manufacturing in-house as opposed to subcontracting elsewhere. Um, and uh, as a rough ballpark figure, we sell between 40, uh, you know, sort of 40, 45 a year. Two enthusiasts that love this kind of thing. Exactly, yes. And, and each year we try and produce more and each year we just keep running out. So that was another reason for going down this route because, uh, you know, it's going to free up so many man hours. And I'm, I'm always on the train going backwards and forwards up and down the country. Are these, uh, are these a reliable mode of transport? Um, yeah, extremely actually. Um, every year we do a Santa Claus special at our local club and guess which loco is the only one going at the end of the day. <laughs> but I'm assuming, I don't think I could get on it, there's probably a weight limit, is there? Uh, yes, well there is a weight, weight limit, but I mean that most of them will pull sort of 8 to 10 people without any problem whatsoever, so you know, they're a good workhorse. Uh, one good word to summarise, I think it's fascinating and, and good luck for 2018, Andy. Uh, you, you've obviously had a, a good and a, a bad year, so let's hope that next year it runs a bit smoother. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one way to go and that's forward and up. <laughs>